thanks for coming in uh, for the talk. My name is Asif. I work at Amazon Web Services as a tech lead, centered around modern applications. And AI is a part of modern applications, and I'll talk to you why and how. So machine learning or AI is not a new concept in my mind. Uh, this has, the term was coined back in the day, but there are really four distinct domains, and we all know this, so I don't have to bore you with the guys with that. But what has happened is deep learning has really picked up in the last 10 years as compute and resources became more commoditized, more affordable. So you see this burst of deep learning algorithms coming in all the way from autonomy, autonomous driving to computer vision and things like that. Now, when, when you look at where machine learning is, data as itself can give us output, but without applying data, what's the, what's the point, right? Yes, I can do amazing research, but it has to solve a problem. And that's where, when you look at machine learning, where machine learning is in our lives today, when you use a personal home assistant, probably you're thinking and at the back of your mind that, that there's natural language processing happening, speech to text, text to speech, and things like that. There's robotics everywhere we can talk about. I was checking into an airline, and I could check in with my face. And uh, that was amazing. That was computer vision, facial recognition, AI being applied. So we are at the Applied AI Conference. I'm going to talk a lot about applications and how to embed AI into applications versus what AI does. I have Zoom. You guys know deep learning. You guys know the, the math and the algorithms much better than I do. <laughs> so with that said, uh, but the circle of a M machine learning apps or AI apps is broken today. And what I say that is, You've got th three cohorts of three types of personas trying to develop this one coherent piece. So you have the data science team, which is really good in the math, understanding the data, and they can uh, really crunch the numbers and build the next optimization, best optimization algorithms. So one of the projects I did back in the day was about predicting driving range of electric cars. So our data scientists could look at the terrain, the slope, your driving habits, your car performance, and give you a number that, hey, based on how you're driving and where you're going, you probably will survive 50 miles with this battery range that you've got. That's really a machine learning problem. We used statistical regression at the time, but now you can do it through other mechanisms. But then on the other hand of this side, of this uh, uh, problem sit application engineers, DevOps, where you need to be able to present this back to the consumer so that it's usable. I'll give you a very simple example. When you go to a home buying uh, app today like Zillow or Redfin, you see a number. What is the price of this home? You get a number, 700K, 750K. And if it's off by 50% or 40%, that's a pretty, pretty bad cons customer experience. And you want it to be as close as possible, but you also want this AI data points to be embedded in your apps. And as we go towards modern apps or edge apps, which is the doorbells of the house, the Nest thermostats, AI is getting more embedded into our applications than we could ever realize at the consumer level. So today, we are really living in this broken world and everybody's trying to solve this, which is the data science team saying, machine learning is great and I can do su such amazing things. And the app team is tasked to apply it, scale it, and provide that app experience. Now, how do we solve this? So Amazon has a bunch of services, uh, and, and other, other, other people also have got a bunch of CS, but the two, two services that are pretty popular, popular is TensorFlow, and Amazon has M M MXNet, which is open source. The, the developers, or the application developers, or DevOps people live in this world. They don't live in, in the previous world. They don't live, they don't understand Spark, Spark ML. They don't understand. Uh, Cafe and TensorFlow. This is like making two different domains of people talk, making somebody who understands French talk to somebody who understands English. It's like, what are you talking? The developers are more focused on cloud IDEs, their dev tooling, building a CI CD tool chain, and really consuming those APIs. All I want to do is I want to say, call this API and give me the prediction or the inference and a feed forward mode or not. And this is my data set. So how do we solve this? This is one of the one of the methods or mechanisms that we could think of solving this. And I have a demo, but I will run out of time. I'm pretty sure in 10 minutes, uh, like this is a very short talk. But what happens is I'm a data scientist. 
I live in this Jupyter Notebook world. I get the data, I train the model, and Amazon has Amazon SageMaker that you can use to train models now in a distributed fashion. Now, I train my model and upload the model into Amazon S3 or any cloud storage solution. But I've only solved 25% of the problem. I want this to be repeatable, ap applicable. I have another cohort sitting up on top, or a persona application developer, who is tasked to build this beautiful app that everybody loves going back to five times a day. They are really focused on writing code. Their life, they, the nirvana for them is git push and done. Once I did git push, everything should be magic. That's not true. Anybody who's lived in this DevOps space knows this is not true. You need to deploy those binaries, those bits on, uh, on, on the infrastructure to make them work. Now, that's where pipelines and build servers come in, which is Jenkins pipeline or code build or, or things that, like that. So what it does is the pipeline provisions the infrastructure for you. And in this case, at the end of the day, you are deploying on compute instances, which is EC2s of the world or the VMs. Uh, you, and the talk is basically around containers. So you can deploy MXNet on containers today. Like we did, like the example that I'm talking about is on GitHub. So you can go and download the Docker image and run it. And containers give you this horizontal scale that you can use. I also have a load balancer. So when people, when my API spikes from my mobile app, when I'm going to 1 million requests uh, per, per second, the service should not fall apart. And in front of that, I'm fr fronting it with a friendly DNS server, which I can say, hey, go to a friendly name called uh, test.myproduct.com versus some random integer. The mobile developer or the consumer in this case can take a picture. Let's say that the app is recognizing pictures for simplicity and call that endpoint. And all of this, by the way, has happened automatically, automagically, whatever you may call, behind the scene. The DevOps people know how to provision the infrastructure. The app developer knows how to write the app. The mobile engineer knows how to write the mobile app. And the data scientist does the, does the modeling. How do we connect the dots now? The dots are connected using the MXNet API, which is basically reading data from S3 from the code perspective, from the application code. It's a Python script, I can show you that. And then it calls an MXNet API saying predict or infer what this Im image is. And in this case, the image is of Golden Gate Bridge and it comes back and says it's a suspension bridge. Now, as the app is getting used, that data is getting collected and the data is fed back into the training data set that the, that the data scientist is using to train the model. So, you, so what have we achieved with this uh, reference architecture or reference implementation? We've achieved a communication model between different sets of people who pro most likely don't understand each other's language. So uh, using a common store or using the model as that mechanism to communicate. So you, as a data scientist, you definitely get the model, you store it in one place. And app engineer, you want to use the model to infer, or you want to call them MXNet model to be used API, call that um, API. And we've also created a feedback loop where the data collected by the app is stored back or contributed back to the training data set. And as we all know, as your training data set improves, your eff efficacy of your model keeps improving. Now, and then as we roll out a new service, let's say I, I have a next version of a mobile coming out, I don't have to change a thing under the hood. This stays the same. All I do is I do git push, the pipeline takes it over, and I don't know if you can read that, but it says update service, and you update a service. And in this case, it's Amazon ECS, it could be Kubernetes, but you say update service, and that service gets updated with the new application code that picks up the latest model, which is stored in S3, and you are contributing data back. Now when you connect the dots, as an AI application team, now you can build very, very uh, cool solutions. This is uh, open sourced, this project, which was open sourced last, last year. And if I can actually go to this link, this is a blog that you should be able to hit pretty quickly if it comes up. And I'm not on the internet for some reason, okay. Let's see, 
Yeah, I can get there. So this is a blog that we wrote, the whole presentation that I did for the last 10 minutes, roughly, uh, is available. And you can go and take a look. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I can't show a demo today because I'm out of time. But I'll show you the output of this. So the output is a friendly name like this, which is not friendly, uh, uh, as friendly as I want it to be. But let's say the, it's pointing to a DNS. And I'm saying, tell me what this image is. And this image is really the Golden Gate Bridge that I'm trying to predict. So let's try to get this uh, and see what this image This is the Golden Gate Bridge. Let's say I go and say, what is this? In 800 milliseconds, and there are things I'm not doing. I'm not caching the model. I'm not, I've not even done application level improvements at all at this point. And in 850 milliseconds, my API is going to come back and tell me what you're seeing is really a suspension bridge. That's the power of applying AI. When you check into with your face, or when you go and uh, they recognize you with your bi uh, biometrics, it's a lot of deep learning in being applied. So with that, I think I'm completely out of time. So thank you for uh, listening to me and coming in. But this is a short talk, a lightning talk. I hope you learned something and you can apply this in your applications. Do we have time for questions? No, we don't have time. I'll be hanging around. If you have questions, please let me know. <laughs> thank you.